Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. Today's video, we're gonna be discussing this guy right here, a 3D printed AR-15. Now you might be asking yourself, but is the barrel printed uh, down in the comments? You're probably typing. And the answer is no, the barrel is not printed. The goal of this project was to print as many of the parts as possible on a 3D printer, help keep the price down, possibly lower the weight, and also just use less firearms components and also achieve kind of a different aesthetics, better ergonomics than a standard AR-15 you could buy off the shelf. And that is kind of what I've been working towards. So on this guy right here, many of the parts that would ordinarily be made from metal or plastic on a factory AR-15 are now all 3D printed. In this case, it is a mixture of carbon fiber nylon internally and a PLA plus on the outside. The parts of this gun that are from an AR-15 are the barrel, the muzzle device, the gas system, which is, consists of the gas tube and the gas block, our bolt carrier group, our charging handle, the fire control group, selector switch on this side over here where you can't see it, the bolt hold open, and the magazine catch that holds our magazine in place. The rest of the components are actually 3D printed. Now we do have a few hardware components. For example, we have three sets of fasteners. Up front we have a brass melt-in insert and a single screw that comes in the front of the lower, through the upper end of the lower right here that holds it all together. Here on the stock, I need to work this out a little bit better, but right now I have a screw coming in the back and a screw coming in under here and some melted in brass threaded inserts in the main body of the stock to hold together the two pieces of the stock the back piece here and this guy here. The parts that are actually on a metal on AR-15 that are now replaced with 3D printed parts or have been redesigned so that they're not needed are the barrel nut. There is no barrel nut. There's an internal clamshelling barrel mount inside here. Uh, the uh, handguard obviously is replaced with a printed handguard. The upper receiver is replaced by a printed upper receiver. There is no dust cover on this weapon. It's really not needed and adds lots of complexity. So we got rid of that. There is no buffer tube. The buffer tube is integrated into the stock here. It is also 3D printed. There is no buffer retainer. The buffer retainer pin is not needed with this design since instead of folding down like this on a factory AR-15, this guy actually slides in straight from the front. Uh, so we don't need that buffer retainer. I got rid of that. There are no takedown pins. It's actually dovetails and has some lugs back here that hold it all together. So there's just a single screw up front and we have no takedown pins in the front or back. So all of that stuff is gone. Also, the pistol grip is integrated. So we no longer have a pistol grip bolt coming up here and all that weakness associated with that area. The pistol grip is just one integrated piece. Now that I did have a downside. I had to uh, work out a way of holding the detent and detent spring for my selector switch. And I did that by using a single, uh, put a hole in the bottom here with a small set screw that holds that in. So that set screw is also not printed and that's a purchased hardware item. So all of that together results in very few actually factory parts. You have your barrel, your bolt carrier group, your charging handle, and then all the miscellaneous lower receiver components. And then of course an optic on top. And that's really it. So most of these parts are indeed 3D printed and that does bring the cost of the gun down. It doesn't really make it much lighter, a little bit lighter, because the plastic in the end is actually pretty heavy. This gun weighs in, the plastic components are around two pounds or 900 grams, so almost one entire roll of Polymaker PLA Pro was used to print this gun, and I didn't use 100% infill everywhere. Some parts of the gun, such as the handguard, uh, is 100% infill for the first bit of it right here, and then we go to less infill, then even less infill down at the end. So it's kind of tapered internally. Same thing with the uh, stock and buffer tube back here. It's 100% up front, and then a little bit less. The lower receiver, the lower areas down here in the pistol grip and in the bottom of the magazine well, lower infill, and it's 100% infill up above. So I only put 100% infill where it was needed. The upper receiver, except for the top area where the rail is and in back here, is all 100% infill. So that upper is a lot of the weight right there. There's a lot of plastic in it. The hand guard and the stock are held on using the same technique. And this is really the only part of the gun which is more unique, I would say, uh, in my development process. I'm actually using hose clamps right here. And I am wanting to work on a more streamlined solution because these hose clamps definitely are not streamlined, which is not good. It doesn't meet the design aesthetic and the ergonomics of the gun. And they can kind of get in the way. I don't like that. I am trying to figure out a better solution to that. There's a couple different candidates, but it's not as easy as you would think. And it's not as easy as my normal AR-15s, which I already have a hose clampless solution for. 
Um, so those hose clamps actually hold tapered clips into uh, dovetail sort of profiles, and those clips, uh, when they're clamped down by the hose clamp, pull everything together really tight. So there is no bolts or fasteners in here. There's actually just the special profile on the upper receiver, the handguard, and of course the lower receiver and the stock. And then these clips, which are printed from a polycarbonate, are pulled in to those uh, little dovetail profiles using the hose clamp. And that is actually really, really strong, and it's super streamlined, except for the worm drive mechanism on the hose clamp. I know you guys are going to want to see this being shot yet. I've actually shot a number of the prototypes with lower infill amounts doing te during testing. I have not shot this guy yet and I'm very excited to do so. This is my first of the newer version which is all printed with full infill and I'm really hoping that it's going to work well. There are a couple small problems with the bolt hold open I need to work out in the next version but those shouldn't affect firing the weapon. So if you'll stay tuned just a little bit later in this video I am going to actually take this to the range and put some rounds through it. Now I didn't do this design completely in a vacuum. There's actually a number of design features I've pulled out of other designers designs and ideas. So I want to give a shout out to a few different designers who I grabbed ideas from. So big one proto firearm he has been working on the 3D printed AR-15 uppers and lowers for actually some time now. He was a big inspiration for this project. You can find him under Proto Firearms here on YouTube as well as out on Instagram. And I think he's on uh, Odyssey as well. So definitely check out his content. Very interesting stuff from Proto Firearms. This magazine is actually angled forward at a one degree angle and I've adjusted the height a little bit to make sure it all runs smoothly. And that angle makes the bullets tilt up just a little bit more so they can feed into the chamber without needing any feed ramps on the, lower rec uh, on the upper receiver receiver on the plastic part. I only need the M4 feed ramps on the barrel extension, which makes the gun much more reliable and you don't have plastic wearing down. So that was a really brilliant idea from Proto Firearms that I've integrated here. Ivan the Troll, and I'm, you've probably heard of him if you're in the 3D printed gun world, or Navigo Boom. Uh, he's done a number of gun designs. The one I've printed so far is the KF5. Uh, it's a 3D printed MP5. Really cool design, and I actually borrowed the barrel mount from that gun. Uh, original, I believe, used on his Set Me design, which is a roller blade blowback 308, and it's basically two clamshelled pieces which clamp the barrel together and then get pressed into an opening on the front of the upper receiver. And that secures the barrel very, very well, and it's very streamlined, easy to use with my uh, clip mounting method for my handguard. It really integrates well, and it also allows me to make those clamshelled parts from a carbon fiber nylon, which is insulating and is also uh, heat resistant. So that helps protect the rest of the gun. And those small parts can be made from the carbon fiber nylon, so you don't have to be printing a whole gun from it. So that was really great. Middleton Made actually helped quite a bit with this design, even though I'm sure he doesn't know it at this point. I did a live stream with him discussing CAD design. He had a technique where he designed parts uh, that were separate parts, but he designed them in one part and then just cut them apart inside that part. Uh, it's more complicated off the watch the stream, but I actually used that technique on the upper and lower receiver and it made it so much easier to design the upper and lower all streamlined and blended like this together and then cut them apart afterwards using a uh, surface and then I used the surface to, to make the split line. And last but not least, the developers of the Biden's Bane. So I'm actually not sure exactly who all the developers are of that. It's a 3D printed upper and they used a steel tube to support the gas tube to keep from melting the plastic. So I built Built upon that, and I'm actually using a ceramic insert, which you can buy online for just a few dollars. I'm using that ceramic insert mounted in the carbon fiber barrel mount, and that that keeps the extreme heat on that gas tube from melting the plastic and causing the gas tube to misalign, causing malfunction. So I've had zero problems with the gas tube melting it because of that. So that was, once again, a really good idea, which I have used on this uh, weapon right here. So I think that sums up all the people who I uh, grabbed ideas from. Let's hit the range and actually shoot this thing. First rounds through the gun. So here we have 55 grain new ammunition from Winchester. So good ammo. I'm gonna put it in there. Magpul magazine. First round is chambered. I'm gonna fire one round cautiously. Okay, didn't blow up. And then. The failure to eject we saw 
we definitely have an ejection problem having to do with the geometry of our brass deflector and our ejection port. I'm gonna get a different bolt carrier group and see if it's consistent. I have had an issue with that all along and I'm not quite sure what's causing it, um, but uh, it's something I have to get to the bottom of. Let's sum up the features here. So we have a free float handguard with a textured grip area. Uh, this is designed for a carbine length gas system that you could potentially go longer. The uh, upper receiver has a built-in Picatinny rail integrated to the top of it for mounting any kind of optics you want. This can work with any charging handle. I am using an extended charging handle from Bravo Company USA on there. And then we have a textured area back here on the stock with a streamlined cheek weld for maximum comfort while shooting, getting a really good cheek weld on there. This allows you to grab the gun uh, between your arm or anything else right back here with all that texture. We have the integrated pistol grip, which is textured. It uh, gives you a really great grip there. The front of the lower receiver is rounded. Also, is a grip area here if you're doing like CQB or you are having to hold the gun for a really long time and you can't support it out for a way, you can pull in and you can kind of get a better support for longer periods of time uh, during high strain use. Uh, so those kind of all come together and um, give us some pretty good ergonomics here and I'm hoping to improve the ergonomics further in the future. We also have QD points on both the right side and the left side on our handguard up here as well as on our stock right here. Uh, that allows you to put a sling on it in a good comfortable configuration whether you're left-handed, right-handed, however you want to go. You can stick in there. Those QD points actually print right into the plastic. Remarkably strong and work quite well. This time we have the Aero Precision Bolt Carrier Group. Let's see what this one does any differently. Seems much better. This is the original bolt carrier group that was in my upper receiver, the cheap one which I got from Palmetto or somewhere. Let's see what this one does. Seems to eject fine from the arrow precision upper. Interesting. I just reviewed the footage from the GoPro at 240 frames per second as best I can on that small screen. And the conclusion that I come to is that the cheaper bolt carrier group, for whatever reason, I think it has a weak ejector on it. I felt it with a punch and it felt much weaker than the air precision one. Like the spring is too light or something's damaged. It is, uh, for some reason, the brass is not tilting as much as it should. It's not getting flung out as much. So when it hits the brass deflector, rather than kind of tumbling out of the gun, it's being pushed forward. I also noticed between the Aero, the Air Precision aluminum upper and my printed upper, my printed upper does tend to bounce the shells forward more. And when you mix the printed upper with the defective bolt carrier group, what you get is the shells bounce forward so much that they actually get stuck between the bolt and the chamber. It actually kind of chokes over its own brass because the brass is deflected straight forward back into the gun. No good. So I definitely need to look into the geometry of the deflector. This is a problem I've been kind of struggling with for the last few iterations. And I think that my bolt carrier group being having something wrong with it definitely is a factor, but I think that the printed upper geometry is somehow off just a little bit, causing the problem. So I need to investigate both of those. However, with the Aero Precision Bolt Carrier Group, it seems to be functioning quite well, so let's keep shooting. Seems to be working pretty good. After reviewing the slow-mo footage from that little shooting session, I have come well, I didn't come to a conclusion, but I saw that the brass is still not deflecting properly off the brass deflector. So basically the shell hits the brass deflector and it bounces straight back forward rather than tumbling out. I have to solve this problem and uh, it, it seems to be really the only issue we're having with this gun. I, my previous iterations, I actually had some that didn't have this problem. My first lower actually ejected, my first upper I printed, I ejected really well. And this one is actually very similar geometrically. So I'm not quite sure what's causing the problem. If you have any ideas, what could it be? Please leave it down in the comments below. Obviously I'll be playing all the high speed uh, video from the GoPro here so you can see it. So please let me know what you think this is. I need to investigate this and get this fixed before I can release the upper into beta testing. So, um, that's kind of the only big issue we're having right now is that weird ejection problem. And I'm having it with both bolts. Even with the air precision here, we're still having the problem. It just, it's not actually causing the gun to jam every time like it was before, but it's still a problem as you can see on the high speed footage. Bolt held open fire with an aluminum mag. 100 yards. Oh. 
There's five rounds on the paper. Once again, a couple on steel. Well, there's our magazine. Another successful last round bolt hold open. Let's check that paper out. All right, there we go. So um, that's our group, five rounds. That's the previous three rounds at 50 yards. So I was aiming for the middle of the paper. It should be zero to 50 yards, three inch diameter width, so not bad. I should kind of shoot some more. I'm gonna fire this again and see what the group is at the end of the day. At this point, I really like to show you guys how this thing works in detail, all the innards, how I made everything work together, and how all the details of the way the design integrates. Unfortunately, here on YouTube, they think that type of content violates their terms of service, and they will unfortunately remove my video if I do that, most likely. So what I'm gonna ask you to do, to help both of us, is get on your favorite search engine and search Hoffman Tactical and then odyssey.com. That's O-D-Y-S-E-E. Com. I highly encourage you to create an account out there, follow myself, follow other content creators, and uh, wa start watching videos out there. The reason I say that is because they're, it's a very uh, firearms-friendly platform. It's actually a really good format. I actually like it, Odyssey. It's got a lot of good features just for file, or sharing files and videos in general. So highly encourage you to check out Odyssey, follow me out there, and that way... YouTube can't censor me. Okay, I think it's time to mag dump this thing and then do one more accuracy test before wrapping up the video. It's mag dump time. So I only have 25 rounds of the magazine because I want to save five of them for that accuracy test. So this will be a more than 100 rounds in today's video we put through this thing. Weapon is chambered. Let's dump these 25 rounds on the target. For reference, the gun is still hot. I can just touch the barrel, though not comfortably. So it's still quite warm. Let's do this. Flawless ejection, um, not flawless, but no problems. We still, it's kind of too weak for my taste, but bolt held open on the aluminum mag. It's just a mag bolt I've been having trouble with. Um, fun is still cycling fine. That high speed footage should be cool. Um, so I think I should do that accuracy test now that the gun got us some more heat on it. Uh, I shouldn't have done that, that was a mistake. Don't touch your barrel, it's, it's dumb. Okay, so accuracy test coming right up. <laughs> Okay, I've been getting quite a few questions on social media about, and also emails about testing this thing. What kind of beta test am I planning to do? People want to get on that. So I do actually plan on doing a beta test because this is a much more involved build than a lower receiver. There's a lot of problems which I could potentially miss. So because of that, I want to do a beta test. The way I plan on doing it is on my website, I have an email list. So if you're not on that email list, uh, head out to hoffmantactical.com, scroll to the bottom of the page. You can sign up down there, just name an email. Once you're up, sign up for that. I'm going to, when I'm ready for beta testing here in the next few weeks, I hope, um, within the next month, I, I would say definitely, I'm going to send an email email out with a list of requirements that you have to meet to get on the beta test. It's going to be pretty basic. I want you guys to be able to have already printed at least one, preferably more than one AR-15, and then printed some sort of fully printed firearm, whether it's a, a MP5, a Biden Spain, or even, even a 1022 might, might work. Just so you have the experience, you know, printing guns, and then I'll let you guys just return your application, basically, application, and I'll take a look at it, and then I'll grab, like, a certain number of people for the beta test, put them on a special mid list, uh, email list, not a, not a special hit list or anything bad. I'm going to, uh, you know, communicate with you guys, get you the right files, and then we'll be able to work on beta testing. So if you want to try to get it on beta testing, head up to my website, subscribe to the email list, and uh, we'll go from there. Back at 100 yards, I'm going to chamber it. We have five rounds here. We're going to put five more in the center of that paper and see what it looks like compared to earlier. I think it's just an interesting experiment, and the results will be, will be interesting. Not conclusive, but interesting. Bolt held open, five rounds on paper, I hope. Let's see what that looks like. Here we are, yep, and very interesting results. So our original group, right there, our second group. Nothing was changed except shooting, uh, basically like 25 rounds, 25, 30 rounds. So we have one there, one there, one there, one there, and one there. So our group dropped by uh, 12 inches, basically, and it did spread out a bit. So there you go. The heat is definitely causing a droop of, that's 12 MOA. Closing thoughts. 
uh, about this gun and what we did. So today, first of all, I would say we fired like 110 rounds through here. So I had 120 rounds of 5.56. I put like 10 rounds through my metal upper, my uh, arrow upper right here, just trying to see what the ejection problem was. So 110 of those um, went to this little guy. The three printed upper still works. Um, still works fine. It's cooling off now. So uh, it's going to continue ticking. I intend to keep shooting it. So obviously the elephant in the room here is the heat. It's plastic. It's very hot it's um, gonna melt, right? Obviously we saw some of that today with our 12 MOA drop after doing a 25 round mag dump. So uh, heat is definitely a concern. So I've seen two different areas of, of damage. So I've already, to be clear, I've already uh, printed a number of prototypes. Uh, one of them I actually melted down with 100 rounds or 90 something rounds I fired continuously to see what it would do. And what happened uh, was similar to what we're observing here today, the number one, the handguard starting out at the front here, particularly right above the gas tube right here, softens up where it'll just get squishy. On that one, the handguard actually melted into the barrel. I had to freeze the whole thing in the freezer to get it off the barrel, uh, which is a great trick, by the way. Uh, on this guy here today, I did notice some slight softening in the in the PLA Plus up here on top, uh, but that was it. The handguard stayed pretty good intact. It's it's quite warm right now, but it's not hot enough to be, be soft. The other failure is the front end of the receiver right here, and our clip mounts right around here. The PLA underneath them softens up, so everything kind of just loosens up a little, and that allows the barrel to not be as tight in the receiver since it's just a press fit in there. It's press fit, and then it's clamped in by our uh, clip clamping system right here, and that all loosens up, and that allows the barrel to, to sag, and that's the problem. How many rounds can you practically shoot? I would say today the gun was already hot when we started doing that mag dump. So I would say you can practically shoot one magazine, no problem, let it cool off, 30 rounds. Uh, I would say 60 rounds is probably as many as much as you want to go without having like, serious problems. And then beyond 60, you run into issues with the barrel. When the bolt hits the barrel, the barrel actually starts moving forward. The whole barrel mount starts moving forward because the PLA is soft enough for that to happen. And then you start having problems with the bolt not locking up properly. And at like 90 rounds, I was still functioning, but it was, there was a lot of friction in there and there's problems with the bolt locking up smoothly because the barrel, the, uh, the barrel extension was moving forward too much. So I would say with PLA Plus, with this design, 30 safe. 60 is uh, as far as you want to go, and at 90 you start, basically the gun is going to start having problems. Can you go beyond that? If you, uh, it's an interesting little thing here. It takes time for the heat to transfer from uh, inside the gun to the plastic on the outside. So if you shoot super, super quick, and Ivan actually, in his video, Mounting on the Biden Bane, Ivan the Troll, he did a really good discussion of why this is and all that. But basically, uh, if you shoot super, super quick, you could probably put uh, 150, 200 rounds through this if you shot full auto, because the heat takes time to come out but it's going to the gun will totally melt afterwards because there's so much heat in there by the time it transfers to the plastic it's going to actually melt it your gun's going to just be totally destroyed so because of that shooting slowly you'll be able to get less rounds through the gun than shooting quickly um, so if you shoot 100 rounds in a row it'll work but then your gun will be destroyed so keep that in mind so right now we're looking at about 60 rounds i would say what can we do to fix that obviously carbon fiber nylon i would say i am looking at some different carbon fiber nylons to print this with i'm very interested in printing one of these upper receivers in carbon fiber nylon i think that that is going to really be a huge improvement because the glass transition temperature or just the you know the the uh just the heat deflection temperature of pla plus is very low like 120 130 degrees really 130 degrees fahrenheit you're getting you're starting to get soft uh nylon is is double that and uh to, in order to in order to produce double the heat to soften it up it, it takes a lot more energy uh carbon fiber nylon should actually take us to a practical level where the gun is not going to melt even after uh couple hundred rounds that's at least my hope so that is what i'm planning to do for heat i don't think there's any way around having to use nylon pla plus is is no matter how much stuff you do to it the heat will get to it there's no way of, of bleeding that heat off unless we add active cooling like a cooling fan mounted under here or, or water circulating which is actually an option which could make pla plus work just fine for extended shooting uh, but as far as just a passive system like this i think that a carbon fiber nylon or, or glass filled nylon or even a polycarbonate. It's one of the high temperature plastics is going to be the only effective solution long term. You need to uh, do a couple things. Head out to my website, subscribe to that email list so you can get on on beta testing if you're interested or just updates on the design. Also head out to odyssey.com. Subscribe to myself and other creators out there so that we can't be censored and suppressed by YouTube. You can even use Google to search for it. Ironically, it works just fine. And then uh, I need on my end, I need to work out this little ejection problem. Interestingly enough, when we were shooting, except for the first time with the uh, black cheap bolt carrier group, Aero Precision Bolt Carrier Group actually gave us no issues with uh, actual failures to eject, but the ejection was not the best pattern. It was throwing the brass up forward instead of kind of bouncing out the side. So still needs work, though with the better Bolt Carrier Group, it wasn't a big issue. Um, and then I also need to fix my little problem with my Bolt Carrier and a couple, I mean, my magazine catch I meant, and a couple other little issues before I open up beta testing with this thing. Um, so that's what I got to do on my end. You got to do the Odyssey thing and the email list thing. If you're over here on YouTube or if you're on Odyssey, either way, be sure to uh, follow the channel 
channel for more content like this, leave a like down below, and I'll catch you guys again next time. Uh, thank you so much for watching.